Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to finish example one from section 4.2 and 4.3 by looking at part C. So in the last video, I gave you a challenge to compute the area under the curve using more and more rectangles. In part C, we have some examples done for us. So what we're gonna be doing in this part is to use information provided to obtain the best estimate we can of the area under the curve. So let's just notice or observe some things. So these first three graphs are all a left sum using left endpoints of the rectangles. These three examples are using right sum rectangles. The height of the rectangle is computed by the endpoint on the right. And notice what happens with these areas. So we get Using 10 rectangles, we have 0.98. Using 20 rectangles, we have 0.931. 30 rectangles, 0.915. And for the right rectangle, right side, we get 10 rectangles, 0.78, 20, 0.83, 30.849. .8 so we see that these left-hand sums get smaller and smaller. The right hand sums get larger and larger as they take up more of the area under the curve. So then what can we say about the area under the curve using these examples? Well, similar to what we just saw, we know that the area under the curve is between 0 0.849 and 0 0.915. Again, we can just look at these rectangles to see that the left sum rectangles are overestimating our area. See all this extra area they're computing? And our right sum rectangles are under underestimating the area. Here's the area they miss. So our, our actual area is gonna be somewhere in between those two values. So one common thing to do is to take an average of those two. So we can say to get the best estimate for the area, let's take an average of these two areas. So we can take 0 0.849 plus 0 0.915 divide by two, and we get 0 0.882. So that's our best estimate we can make using the information we've been given. And so one comment I wanna make here on this final note. So this note says the exact area under f of x from zero to two is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity and equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of what? Well, what we were just computing up here were right and left hand sums. So if we took the number of rectangles to go to infinity to get smaller and smaller widths or get more and more rectangles, we're gonna actually compute that area under the curve. So what this means is that if, you take the number of rectangles going to infinity, then you're gonna get the exact area under the curve. So in the next video and the next work we're gonna do is set up these functions or these equations involving N to compute the left and right hand sums. And then we'll take a limit to actually compute the exact area under the curves. All right, thanks for watching everyone. Keep up the hard work.